Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare204 here bringing you another Minecraft World War II vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the L3-35 LF. The L33 or L35 was a tank kit originally built in 1933 and used by the Italian army before and during World War II. It was based on the imported British Carden Lloyd tank kit. Many CV-33s were retrofitted to meet the specifications of the CV-35 in 1939, and in 1938 the CV-33 was renamed the L3-33, while the CV-35 became the L3-35. The original uh, CV-33 carried a two-man crew protected by 12 uh, millimeters of walled armor and was armed with a single 6.5 machine gun. The version we see in front of us here is the uh, L3-LF, which basically is the flamethrower version. LF standing for Lancia Flame, which means flamethrower. Uh, the flame tank was based on the L3 tankette and began in 1935. The flamethrower nozzle replaced one of the machine guns and the flame or fuel was carried in an armored trailer towed by the vehicle. Later versions had the fuel carried in a box shaped tank mounted above the L3's engine compartment. As you can see right here, um, this right here is the later version, which did have the box mounted on top of the uh, engine bay of the tank and I will also be doing a tutorial for the earlier version which did have a tow trailer that would go directly behind it um, but yeah uh, really cool stuff and a fun little flame tank we don't have too many of those on the channel so uh, kind of fun to have one and especially for a nation we don't see too much of Italy so we'll go ahead and take a look at it um, pretty cool stuff we have obviously the flame nozzle here uh, pretty simple not too crazy the tracks again is pretty much the same as the L3 slash 33 and it is upgraded slightly in terms of things internally that we really can't see. Um, but we also have the rear here which has the tank itself, the hose that runs into the tank and will eject the fuel forward and all that stuff for the flamethrower to actually work. It's a cool little design, funky little thing and uh, it's going to be a fun little build to put into any of your Italian uh, or maps that do have Italian stuff. So anyways, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our um, bottom layers and working our way up. All right guys, go ahead and move it into our um, tutorial. To start off with, we're gonna go ahead and place down another brick upside down stair, like so. And then going back from the another brick stair, we're gonna go ahead and place down a grindstone facing this direction. And then underneath the grindstone, we're gonna place down another brick full block. We're gonna go ahead and then place down two birch wood fence gates coming off the grindstone and again, two narrow brick full blocks underneath them like that in the ground. We're then going to place down east a smooth sandstone slab, followed by a narrow brick block in the ground like so, and then a narrow brick upside down stair with a uh, wither skeleton skull coming off the back of the stair. On the sides here, we're going to go ahead and place down item frames on the birch wood fence gates and sandstone slab, and we're going to place down smooth sandstone blocks in those item frames. We then also want to go ahead and grab ourselves a birch wood sign, and we're going to place down birch wood signs over the item frames that are on the Birchwood fence gates. And the right there is going to create your right side of your tracks. From there, we're going to go ahead and go over to the narrow brick upside down stair in the front here. We're going to place down a uh, sandstone top slab coming off of it, followed by one, two, three, four, and five sandstone top slabs back like so. From that, uh, we're going to go ahead and then place down a another brick upside down stair coming off the front top slab, a grindstone that's going to be coming off of uh, this section like so, or a yeah, grindstone. And then two birchwood fence gates. Again, we're going to place the blocks underneath these with narrow brick full blocks. We're going to place down item frames here on the side, smooth sandstone blocks in those item frames, birchwood signs over them, sandstone slab, item frame, smooth sandstone, a narrow brick full block, uh, in the ground, narrow brick up sound stair, and then a narrow brick or a wither skeleton skull come off the back here. We also want to place down an item frame, come off the sandstone top slab, and in the item frame, we're going to place down a strip bar hook hanging down or facing downwards like so. After that, I'm um, going ahead and moving up to our next layer. We're going to go ahead and start off by over here on the left side. We're going to place down one and two item frames on top of the grindstone and narrow brick stair. Over here on the opposite side, we're going to place down two birchwood trap doors. So one and two birchwood trap doors. We also want to place down a birchwood button on top of this smooth sandstone top slab. From this point, we're going to go ahead and then take our sandstone stairs. We're going to place down one and two sandstone stairs across, a smooth sandstone block over here to the left side of the tank. And then coming off this smooth sandstone block, we're going to place down one and two uh, end rods going forward, followed by another brick top slab, and then a wither skeleton skull on top of the top slab like that for the nozzle there for the flamethrower. After that, we're going to place down another row of three of smooth sandstone full blocks going across all the way like so 
two virtual buttons on the left side and then one over here on the right side. Also for the front here for the driver's viewport, we're to place down a birchwood sign on the front of the stair, a item frame in the uh, or on the stair as well, and then a black bed rotated to its side, like so, to go ahead and create the driver's viewport. After that, uh, we're going to go and then take a grindstone, and we're going to place down a grindstone on top of this sandstone slab here to both sides, and then a smooth sandstone block in the middle there. We're going to place down an item frame on both sides of the grindstones, a smooth sandstone block in the item frames, and a birchwood sign on the side of the grindstones as well to kind of cover it up a little bit like so. And same thing over here, just like that. After that's done, we're going to go and then place down a stripped birchwood log here in the middle, a narrow brick top slab to both sides of it. We then want to go and take our dark oakwood signs and we're going to wrap dark oakwood signs around the top slab, like that. And then we're going to place down item frames coming off these two top slabs like this facing toward the rear and we're going to place down black concrete in those top slabs. We also want to place down a sandstone wall coming off this stripped birchwood log like so on the very back there. With that out of the way, uh, we're going to then place down a birchwood trap door that is going to go ahead and go on top of this sandstone block like so. We're going to go ahead and place down a sandstone slab to both sides here and also a birchwood slab right there in the middle. We then want to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull on top of this uh, sandstone stair. And after that, we're going to go ahead and then place down a gray concrete block right here, followed by a light gray shulker box to both sides of the light gray concrete block. On the side of the light gray concrete block, we're going to be going ahead and placing down a item frame. Or on the sides of the shulker boxes here, we're going to place down an item frame and then a light gray concrete block in the item frame. After that, uh, we want to go ahead and place down a stone button on these two narrow brick top slabs. And then we're going to place down an brick top slab, cut off the gray concrete block, and then an air brick slab on top of the sandstone wall. And with that all complete, that is going to wrap up my design here for the L3 slash 35 LF flamethrower tankette. Hope you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use. If you do end up using it, I do ask you guys to give me proper credit for it. This can be anything from a sign of the build, tweet to my channel, or this video if this does appear on any social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, you're free to use your favorite projects you guys are working on. Overall, enjoy the build, have fun with it, and all that fun stuff. And, um... Yeah, with that, thank you guys all so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been your 2 4 and I'll see you guys next time.